In the last 15 years, park friends and park staff at Dufferin Grove Park raised about $1.5 million in donations through the park food and skate lending programs. These food and skate lending programs worked like a circle. For example, staff cooked food for the park cafes. People who ate the food gave cash donations, which covered the ingredients costs, the cook's time, with a little left over. On Thursdays at the park farmer's market, staff took the rest of the cash and bought new groceries. Then they cooked more food for Friday night supper. People ate the food and donated more money, which could be used for more groceries and for more staff to cook with a little left over for park sports and crafts. So food and skate lending in the park worked like a fundraiser for the park, not a business. People who could afford to donate more than the suggested amount sometimes did. And people who felt they couldn't afford the whole amount, or anything at all, could eat and borrow skates anyway. They often stuck around and helped with the dishes or snow shoveling. The bank account was handled by the park-based charitable group, the Center for Local Research into Public Space, or CELOS. The staff kept careful accounts. All receipts were recorded using the QuickBooks accounting program and then filed away in envelopes at the CELOS office. Around 2010, city management, Dufferin Grove program staff, and CELOS started planning how the city could take over the cash handling for the food and skate programs. The park program staff were asked to put together a proposal that would combine city policy with practical experience. They worked out a good plan, but it got put on the shelf. Instead, city management assigned a community center staff person to create a new way of handling the donations and running the programs. Cash handling. Program staff were not allowed to do the bookkeeping anymore. Instead, it went straight into a safe and then off-site. Budget information about revenue and spending was no longer shared with program staff or park friends. The cooks were no longer allowed to use the cash from the donations to buy groceries at the farmer's market. Instead, the cooks had to buy most of the groceries at no frills. A full-time community center staff had to go along every time and pay with the city's purchasing credit card. There was no longer an account to pay for the organic supplies which the bakers and cooks used to buy in bulk. The big bins the cooks and bakers used for storage were replaced by small bags of supplies, often not organic. Bigger quantities of cooking supplies can be obtained through a departmental purchase order, a DPO, but that will require yearly projections of every item that might be needed. Predictions of what will be needed are hard to make on that scale, since programming is weather dependent. Fewer people came to the playground in last summer. Poolside donations went down by 14%, $7,000 less. In the winter, fewer skaters came to the rink, and revenue from the rink's Zamboni Cafe and skate lending went down by 28%, $17,000 less. It's hard to know what the city is trying to achieve with its accounting. Is it trying to catch staff stealing? Or is it just trying to collect many Excel spreadsheets with as many numbers as possible? Maybe a little of both. It's the city's approach to numbers that's the subject of this prezi. The question of honesty and trust needs a separate discussion. Looking at the bigger picture of numbers. In 2007, the city manager presented a report to city council called the Full Costing and Pricing Study. The cost accounting report tried to include a lot more numbers than formerly, administration and overhead costs as well as the direct costs of individual programs. 
it showed that the cost of running an outdoor rink, for example, was doubled if central planning and administration costs were taken into account. The report was a test run on realistic cost accounting. It was put on a shelf and not heard from again. But in 2012, the city's finance department again called for full cost accounting. Dufferin Grove Park is a good test case. What is the real cost of sending a full-time staff along with the cooks on every shopping trip? Who gets paid, and for how many hours, to do forward projections on groceries for Friday night supper? What is the benefit of stopping the cooks from buying from the farmers at the park's market? It's time for public discussion of cost accounting.